To go with our standard book creation video that's just been played, we're now going to look at creating a cover for our standard 6 by 9 inch book. Now, the easiest way to do this is to use the KDP, and you can see the cover up there, the URL for that. You can simply go to there and create your own cover template. Let's go back just a little bit. There we go. KDB Cover Calculator, Amazon.com. Let's go to there. There's the home page. Simple as that. We're going to look at the book type. It's going to be a paperback. We're not worried about hardback at this stage, although you might be. It's the same thing. What we're looking at here is creating the template for the cover. Select the interior type. Mm, black and white interior. Paper type is white paper not cream. Cream paper is a little bit thicker, but there you go. We're just looking at the standard options here. The reading direction, don't get confused by that. It's left to right. You start on the left and read your way across the page to the right. Well, unless, of course, you come from one of the countries where you read from right to left. Measurement units, let's make life easy and put it in inches. The interior trim size is the book that we've been working on, which is 6 by 9. There we go. Now this is important, page count. They just take a guess because there is a difference, and I'll show you what that is in a moment. But for the moment, let's just say the book, we've already calculated this, or well, we've already written it, and produced the 6 by 9 book that we had before, so we know exactly how many pages there are. And in this case, let's just say there's 150 pages. I know what I could do with the 6x9. The one that I did myself was the, the ancient story of Beowulf. Now, I won't even go and look at that because I don't want to know how many pages there are. I think there was 169 or 189. But I'm just going to say 150. That's all we need to worry about at the moment. Calculate the dimensions. And there it goes. It comes up with all your details there. If you want to change that, just make any changes and calculate again. That tells you all the exact details. Now, I'd print that out if I was you, so that you've got a permanent reference. But now what we do is simply download the template. Click on Download. And there it goes. I'm going to put this in Documents. Maybe I could put it in Downloads. Mm, uh, I'll just put it in Documents for the time being. There we go. Paperback 6x9. And it says there in the title 150 pages. Now there's already one there. Is this going to do that? Let's see. Is it going to overwrite it? There we go, paperback six, number two. That's all right. So it's the second one. Now, we don't need to look at that anymore. So we can drop that out of the way. And there's our paperbacks there. Paperback six, two. Now, this is the one that we want. This is the easiest way, and there it is, 150, the PDF, the full title, is 6 by 9 by 150. We don't want the PNG one, although actually you could use it, but what I want to do is open this document in Affinity Publisher. Now that's fairly important. Don't try and create the page yourself or the document for the, for the cover document. Let's just open this, right click on that, go along there, and open it with Affinity Publisher there. Now, the DPI is an estimate. The color space is an estimate. We can just leave that there. Favor editable text over fidelity. Well, we don't need to tick that. Just leave all that as it is. And that's what it looks like there. Now, let's open that. And there we go. Paperback. See up the top there? 150 pages, black and white, English, and it's a PDF file. Affinity Publisher loves PDF files. 
Now, I've already got some other paperbacks up there. There's 189. There's 200. And there's one that was done by somebody else that I was looking at. Now, this one here is 150. There's a few things that you need to look at here. The spine width. The number of pages makes a difference when it comes to the spine width. That's that bit there. If you only have 150 pages, your spine width is going to be 0.338 of an inch. Let's have a look at a, a cover that's 200. The spine width is 0 0.45, 0 0.338, 0 0.450. Now 189 pages is 0.426. That makes a big difference. Let's have a look at this one. Now you can see here there's a slight overlap between that one and that one. That's based on the page width. One is spine width. One is 0.426. And that one if I got them back to front there is spine width is 0 0.563. So let's not confuse the issue. Just remember that your spine width, which is that bit there, will change according to the number of pages you have. Now, all the other things being equal, that's the basis of your book cover. Now, how do we use this? The black line is the trim size. There's your 6x9 page. There's your front page. There's your back page, back, back cover page. The blue dashed line is where the spine folds. So don't have anything in on that fold between the white, between in the white space there. Same with this one. Don't, you can see my arrow there. Don't creep out to that edge there. You'll lose it. Keep everything on the document within that white area. Except down here, leave that blank. Even if you like, put a little rectangle there. That's where your barcode goes. Now, on the front, again, that's your white area. That's the live area. Logos, text, essential images in this area. The red area is out of live or the bleed. That red area... When the book is trimmed, when the cover's trimmed, may, you may well lose that. And if you've got the page count wrong, and you can see this here, the difference between that blue line and that Ed blue line there, that's quite a difference in size. You could lose that side of your, your page. Okay, let's go back to paperback 150. We'll just use that one for now, and that's where we start to create our page. Now what you can do in here is remember that this document is a PDF. That's all the pages there. Let's put all those into a group. There we go. That way, when you want to hide them, you can just click on that and hide them. And it gives you a white background. I would always suggest leave that white. Don't go creating a transparent document to put this into. You will never match this document in one you create yourself. It takes, for, oh, it takes forever to try and match them. And if it's a transparent background, Nine times out of ten, KDP and most other printers will complain long and loudly that you have transparencies in your cover. Leave it as a white background, which is what it creates. Okay, now we're going to put a cover on that. Now, 
Why do you have bleed lines there? And that's out to the edge there. That's where the bleed is. It's that red area right to the edge. That's where you put your image. Now, let's see. Can we place some images here? Place. Photos. Let's just go to photos. What have we got in here that I can place in there? You'll notice I'm right out at the edge there. That's where I want it. And it's on the fold line. Now that image won't stay there, obviously, because when the book is trimmed, it will trim it off down there. Even if you go like this, Now let's reduce the transparency. You can see where your image is. Don't leave that as 100%. Drop the opacity really quite a long way down. That allows you to see where your images and documents are on your front page. Now we've got the nice image there of possibly Mars or the Moon or somewhere like that. Now let's do something else on here. This is a this is not a very well designed book cover, I might add. But let's just I'm showing you where your where your um, margins are for your boom boom boom. Now okay. That's very hard to get an image there. There's a, there's a bunch of images. That'll do. Open. And we're going to put this image across there. Navigator, let's reduce that so we can see what we're doing there. And bring the navigator over to the center. Now you can see that you're right out to the edge there and right out to the edge there. We'll bring that one down there and put it underneath that one. So that you can still put in here your front cover, your back cover material. Let's go up here and drop down, drop the transparency even further. Now you can see it's looking more like it. Let's put a couple of text frames in there. There's our text frames. They're already in there because I've imported this as a PDF file, but that's not what I want. If you're very game, you can import these templates as the PNG that's there. Let's see what happens when we do that. We'll take that one up there. We'll go up there. File. Import content. Can we import content in this? Documents. Paperback 6. 6.2. That's the one we wanted. There's the PNG file. No, it won't import it. So we're going to... It's looking to place it. We can go back to here. To the finder. 
open with Infinity Publisher. And there it is. And it's brought it in purely as a background image. That's a PNG file. But that's okay. That's fine. That's what we want. Because what you've got here is the correct sizes. Now it's locked, so we can't move it. We've got to go to the document, document setup, change that from pixels, document. We don't want uh, points, we don't want it pixels, we want it inches. Now it doesn't need to be 600 dpi, that's really too, that's too high, but it doesn't matter, we won't alter it. It's the same document. 150 pages, spine width 0.338. There's our measurements down there, and they're the same as that one. Let's go here and here. We'll copy those, go over to here, and place them there. Go to Navigator and reduce the whole thing in size down to the edge and we want the whole thing on top. That's what it looks like. There's your background and the background in this case is the PNG file. Let's reduce that in opacity so that you can see through it. Now what you haven't got here is what you've got here. See this one here already has text frames in there. Now they're not text frames you would use, except for that one perhaps. Let's put, push this down here. There's that one there, and so forth. But you're, you're unlikely to use them. What you can do is copy them and put them into your one here. But this here, you can see we've started out with a PNG document. That ensures that you have exactly the right size cover. This is what I'm trying to get at here. That's exactly the right size for 150 pages. It's a PDF file, and it has those there to start with. Now that's that one there, which is a text frame. You can see that frame text. So that one there, you can put your own, you can put your own text in there. But of course, the cover they've generated here is not going to be the cover you wanted. But that's where it goes. Now, it's really quite straightforward in that. What you want here is that text frame in that area. Take those out there, turn that on there. And there's your, there's your original cover document. There it is there. Now we want that one there, the PNG file, because you're going to remove that eventually anyway. But what you can do in here, of course, you want to, you want to put your own title in there. Keep it up to there. You might want to put your own a 
and you can see that that's not terribly efficient but what I'm putting in there and you can see that that's gone the green line down there tells you it's the center of that page as you well know for the barcode area text file Now the location and size, it's 2 inches by 1.2 inches. Have we got that there? Two inches by 1.2. There you go, it's exactly the right size now. Don't put anything in there because that's where your barcode's going to go. Doesn't matter what you put there, the KDP barcode will overwrite it. And that's fine, that's what you want. That's inside the boundaries. That's inside the boundaries. Let's just turn that off so it's not um, snapping to the edge. Everything's where it should be. Personally, I wouldn't use what's that artistic text? Let me sit on that. Yes, artistic text tool. I personally wouldn't use the artistic text tool because you don't have a lot of control over it. Use text frames and you can put material in there, move it around, put images behind it and things like that. Speaking of images, now I didn't use text uh, image frames in there but I should have done because what you can do with image frames is put them in here and then you can change those images that's right up to the fold line now that image will get lost a little bit on that fold line but you want it out to the edge because you don't want white gaps there remember you're going to have something else in the spine even if it's just that those same colors now there's your picture frame we'll untext that copy and paste it into the picture frame Turn it on, and there it is. You can see it's not overlapping anywhere. Now that's just what you want. If you've got this one here that you're concerned about, then you do another picture frame here and put it in it. Remember you want those picture frames right out to the edge of the bleed line. What did I do with that picture frame I just had? There it is there. Out to the bleed line. Over to the boundary. Down to there. Turn that on. Drag it into the picture frame. and put it above the other one. You can see the original images now are blanked out. But there they are, neatly on the book cover.
so you haven't got them spilling over the edge, you've got them exactly where you want. That's the power of picture frames. That there is your text frame. Now you can put text in that. That's where the barcode's going to go. So the barcode will overwrite all that. What you can do, of course, is you may be able to take the yellow from this one. Take that, copy it, go back to there. And just put that over there. Now when that prints out, that's where your barcode will be. It'll overwrite that. There's text frame there, there's text frame there. There's an artistic text there which you can move around. Okay, that's about all we need to do. I think you're well on the way now to be able to do your own 6x9 book cover. Remember, put them in picture frames. Don't just drop the images on the page like that one was. Let's get rid of that altogether so it doesn't mess with it. That's there, you can see it's gone. There's the background. There's the frame text. Picture frame, picture frame, frame text. This is my book. Frame text and rectangle. Now, because that rectangle's at the top, let's move it down here a little bit. There we go. Now it's above the images. That frame text there, where's that frame text? That's that one there. So let's take that up out of there and move it up to there. You can rename these layers, of course. Now this is the power of layers and picture frames. There's your picture frame there, there's your picture frame there. And these all look really nice. If you were very clever, you could merge those, but I want that a distinct line there. That's the back cover of the book, and you can put what you like in here. That's where you put your book blurb. Let's get that because it's on the white background. HSL color wheel. Let's make it a nice readable color. Ooh, let's make sure it's all a nice readable color. There we go, now it's all one colour. Okay, I think we can call that quits. How to create a paperback cover using a KDP template in a few easy steps. Let me reiterate that. Load in your background first. Well, whether you load the PNG or whether you load the um, PDF, it doesn't matter. I generally find it easier to load the PNG file because then you're not tripping over all the other um, text frames and things that it puts in there that you then have to get rid of because they will show through in your document and can be somewhat misleading. But you create your own here. Now when you're finished and everything's lined up and you know all your images, you can see the text is inside that margin inside that bleed line you simply turn it off and when you export your file it won't export that background now when you're going to KDP export with bleed with the interior of the document don't export with bleed unless you've got lots of images that go right to the edge of your page then you'll need to bleed for the cover 
export with bleed lines and that's in the export um, options not here you're out to the bleed line there already see if you turn that back on ta -da, there's your bleed there the opacity set to 38 so it's very difficult to see it let's make it very clear there you go that's all there is to it take it right down to nothing just about there 50 that's that's quite visible you can see what's happening there now you've got to do your spine and your front cover because that's the front of the book remember now i hope you found some benefit in this and i hope you enjoyed it so let's finish there and i'll see you again in the next video because if you subscribe and i hope you do please subscribe click on the subscription and click on the notify button and you'll be notified of when new videos pop up on my youtube channel thanks for watching